Hello? Hi. Over here. Hi. I'm Gooface Munsha. <laughs> don't worry, I don't bite yet. I'm so happy you looked at me. I'm saying yes, I'm interested in you. I'm cute with blonde hair and haughty fingers. I'm lonely tonight. But I'm more than just a fantasy. I'm not just a thought. Wait, over here. Hold on to me. Hold on to me. No, don't go. You, I want to have sex with you. Stay here with me. I'm an unsuspecting chick in pantyhose. I have an eager mouth and free Cialis. I have beautiful treats and nice sunny action. I have sweet lips for your heavy member. I'll give you lemons and enemas. You, I'm flirting with you. You, please, please stay here with me just for a little bit, please. I know I only have you for a short time. A friend may suddenly IM or send you a hilarious vi video of a kitten falling off a couch. <laughs> Sometimes soon you will find someone sexier and smarter and more attractive. You can get distracted by a service puppet or lust book match or taste spurt. You may get an offer for low interest credit or a new way to enlarge your parts or you, you'll forget all about me. Or you may take a quick look at your profile and see if you have any messages shifting your retinal focus a slight millimeter to your right from where I stand here and you will tell me you want to get back to me but you won't. <laughs> I want to be your whore several times over. I want to be filled with you. I'm actually very sweet. Can you see my... <laughs> Can you see my ready mouth and wanting wet lips? I mean that in a totally platonic way. Just that my mouth is ready and full of saliva to talk to you. <laughs> you seem fresh. I would definitely remember connecting with you. Wink. <laughs> it's pretty weird that I met you here. I never come here anymore. Um, ah, you're a person of few words. No, I like that. Rare these days. Let's sit right here next to the Winto Green Breath Mints Reflecting Pond. It's so empty clean. Breathe in that clear, scopey air. I always come here when I want to appear wistful. Not a lot of people come here, so we won't be bothered. I like you. No, really, I do. There's something different about you. I don't believe in fate or magic or destiny anymore, but I think you were meant to look at me and spend some time with me. I think you'll listen to me. How about I pull down my sea star amethyst gown and straddle you and tell you a story? Would you like that? Sure you would. Now just lie back here and let me massage you with my giant tits and tell you things. A long time ago when the sky was white and unrendered, I would lay on the delicious green field outside my house and produce love. I thought love would come to me completely intact, loud and powered up, trumpeting obvious opera, decorated with ornaments and cinnamon. I knew it was impossible to order, and I couldn't expect it on a specific date, but still it was easy to convince myself that it would surge into me soon. I believed in love. I believed there were rules to attract it to you. For example, I knew that long-lasting, healthy love appears only after schooling, after you've learned lessons and become seasoned and ready for it. I knew that heartbreak factored in there somewhere, but I thought that it was a surmountable obstacle that led to a more dignified stage. I would be hurt and spend a night crying to myself while listening to evocative pop hits, and then soon after sobbing, the love object would appear. Maybe you think that, that you'll find love someday, that you deserve love. Do you believe that? That's great if you do. Everybody assures him, her, or itself that she or it or he will find love eventually. Even if it ends up being God, the parent, a child, or even a butterfly, which my friend Cynthia is now seriously dating. <laughs> I have to admit, at first I was being judgmental of them as a couple, maybe a little jealous of the relationship, but since then I've had my own insect-human relationship, and also a weather pattern human relationship, and even a logo human relationship, but I desire a human-human relationship, and I shouldn't beat myself up for that. Also, dating a butterfly is so Cynthia. I mean, I love Cynthia. She's probably my longest, closest friend, but she's funny about what she needs. She always wanted something fluttery and constant around her. So, someone to land on her shoulder and give her light petal licks on her cheek. Someone that will caress her labia with its little proboscis. That's her definition of love. Sigh. I wish I was happy. I wish I was happy fucking a butterfly, but I'm just not. I guess that's not part of my journey. Maybe my journey is never to love, or to always long for it. I've traveled into many other cities, many other rooms and portals, and it never seems easy for me to find love like it is for everyone else. If I were a dog, I would choke myself on love like it was a bowl of diseased meat, because it was there in front of me. I don't know what to, how to limit myself. I'm so bottomless. Do you feel this way too, don't you? I've had sex with a dog. That was pretty hot. <laughs> I checked the jungle land across a sea that curled with, steaming, with steam like steeping green tea in a boat made of tightly bound elephant leaves to the canine islands, where I laid with the dog people, the most genuine of all creatures. They lick you all over and are actually quite gentle in bed, and then they hold you from behind with their hairy legs at night and their soft billowing tents. I've also had sex with a dragon, a rainbow, 
a marshmallow sundae, Gopala, a loaf of bread, a Smurf, and the Nike logo. But whatever you do, don't have sex with a Nike logo. Nike is a total disgusting asshole. Sure, it puts some together some cheap, good-looking, functional footwear, but if you ever meet that logo, run the other way fast. Do not have sex with that logo. It fucks you like a jackhammer with a sharp, pointy end of itself. Saying, just do it, just do it, over and over. And then he just gets off and he starts fucking the next creature that he finds. Nike is a fucking asshole douchebag logo fuck. So here we are in these multitudinous rooms in this city, looking and looking. Are we a pair? Have you been any more interesting? <laughs> Probably not. I don't mean to sound cynical. You just seem like a totally, gentle, a totally open, genuine person. You have good energy, I can tell. I'll be totally honest with you. My name isn't Goofface. It's Maureen. Maureen Schlangen. I live in Indiana. I have two kids. I don't think my husband's having an affair. I actually think he has no sex drive at all. He's kind of living over in Eastham, and he's always over there talking to his dad. It's been like this for a while now. Well, actually, I'll be really honest with you. My name isn't Maureen. It's, it's Mike. Mike Elbow. I live in Brooklyn. I'm a writer. Look, I'm not trying to lay anything heavy on you. Just like you, I'm sort of just checking things out, looking around, seeing what happens. I'm so not looking for an LTR right now. I have zero illusions and feel quite sensible and mature about it. I'm here to have connections and have sex and be physical. Oh, oh, oh no, here they come. Okay, please try to pay attention to me. I don't have much time before you. Wait. Oh, I want to be your whore. I will suck you to absolute completion. I want you deeply. You are, you are here. Stay with me. Just look at me. So full and round and full of juice for you. I'm, I'm here. I hate. Oh, I love you. I love you. Okay, thank you very much.